What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter from Panda out here with this rental car. It's a 2019 Toyota CHR, and I love it. So I'm on a work trip here and I rented the CHR. Actually, I was gonna get a Chrysler 300 and they had this. Um, and I was like, well, I've always kind of wanted to check one out. I've seen them before and I was kind of interested. So today I wanna to go into all of the quirks and features of the CHR. Actually not, I just wanna show you what I love and hate about it. And spoiler alert, there's a lot of things that I love about this car and not a lot of things that I don't. And I will tell you what, this is probably one of the first rental cars I've had in a long time that actually got me thinking about purchasing one for myself. So I've had the car just for a couple days and a couple things that I like about it right out of the gate are the look. So I, this is a CHR, it's called the Compact High Ride, I think. It kind of reminds me of the Chevy HHR in the name. And it does have like a high ride. In fact, this platform here is used on a number of Toyota models. In fact, the Prius, I think, is a, a cousin to this car and rides on the same platform. So this looks substantially more uh, sporty, larger than the Prius, even though it rides on a crossover platform. And the other thing I like about it, even though the Japanese, to me, have a little bit of a tendency to overstyle their cars, I think it's really a nicely done vehicle, even though the, kind of the front end is pretty, like, bulky uh, it just looks pretty uh, muscular even though the car doesn't drive like that it drives fine but it does look like a kind of a, a blown up muscular compact sport ute or crossover in a way that i think that nissan juke was trying to do but never did successfully this car just does a nice job i love the high kick up here in the back actually that's something that the aston martin vantage does and it really kind of slims up the middle here but gives the the back haunches some real meat on them i actually like these wheels here they're two-tone uh this kind of reminds me Maybe Aston Martin as well, black and silver, maybe diamond cut there. I like the body lines. They did a nice job on it. The sloping roof line in the back here, they do a nice job cutting up on the, the body line here, which adds more uh, mass to the back here. It actually has like a sport utility coupe like look to it, which everyone is trying to tap into, you know, starting with the BMW X6 and the Porsche uh, Cayenne Coupe, you know, so actually this car I think gives a lot of that style and look, plus some of the utility in a way that is just just uh, bang on, so good on them. Even this highly stylized area here, this rear tail lamp sticks out quite a bit. You know, it, it, it just all works. And kind of this high diffuser in the back, um, I'm really, really liking it. Uh, they've got this spoiler up here with cutouts. It's kind of funny. I think this color, this paint is really metallic. And to me, it just has a little bit of like a purple shift to it, but I actually like it. It has a little bit of a, like a gunmetal color, but in some lights it has like a little purple shift, but I actually <laughs> wouldn't mind driving it. And it seems to reflect the heat uh, pretty well because it is really hot out where I am at the moment. And this car has um, not really been overwhelming to jump into. A really dark gray or black car would probably be a little harder. Now, it does have a pretty long front end here, but it's just nicely done. I think the fact that these headlights cut back so far, it kind of reduces visually the overhang and the length of it. And I just think really successful overall. Now, um, I really like it. And I want to say that one of the reasons that I like it is just the looks and style and Toyota reliability, but that's not it. They really did a great job of just packing in a ton of features. So before I get into it, I want to show you here the key fob. This is a keyless remote. Um, I don't even know if it has a deployable key somewhere, probably. But, but if I just walk up to it, even when it's locked, uh, the driver's side door unlocks and uh, it seems to always open, not the rest of the door. So you have to be specific about that. I also want to say here that these, these mirrors are pretty awesome. They actually fold in apparently. So when I lock the car, I think they will uh, go in. Boom, just like that. So that's pretty awesome. So if I unlock here, uh, they will come back out and uh, side markers on there. So uh, I will tell you, this car is not the highest trim. I think it's the XLE if I'm right. It's uh, so it's kind of the middle trim. There's an XE and then there's a limited and that's the top trim. So this is a really, really well equipped car. Now, a couple things I want to show you that I like and hate about it is actually I really like uh, the materials in here. So first of all, this door panel and kind of everything, it's uh, again, a little bit stylized. It kind of reminds me of the mid 2000 BMW is kind of the stack dashboard. But first of all, I want to show you nice soft touch materials up here. This kind of fake stitching, um, kind of this elephant hide type of material up here goes up along the dashboard here. Leather wrapped steering wheel, which I complain about, kind of this elephant hide, you know, leather like uh, pattern. So soft touch all around up here. Now, what I love what they've done 
because it kind of added this little uh, pyramidal texture to this hard plastic and it looks pretty good. I actually didn't know uh, notice that, that it was kind of a hard plastic until I really started taking a look at it because it kind of gives you a little bit of a different sheen. Um, it's got this kind of floating piece up here. Again, maybe a little over stylized, but it all kind of works because this line flows into these vents and all of that. I, I do like this piano black gloss here. This car is about 10,000 miles on it. We have, uh, so I don't know how well that'll last, but we also have kind of like this vinyl wrapping here and uh, we can adjust everything. Now, like I said, one of the things that I really like about it, and I don't have to put the key anywhere. I can just keep it in my pocket. You got to put your foot in the brake and it does have start stop right there. So I'm going to fire this car up and this car is just chock full of stuff and i'm not going to go over everything but first of all i want to show you that this uh glove box is probably one of the most hidden that i've ever seen actually it kind of took me a little while to figure out where that is but let's start with the the features that are included in this car first of all uh automatic dual zone climate control i have it set to 66 because it's super hot and i think that little sensor up there which is I'm not sure if that's a light sensor, I mean, before your headlights, but I think it also says, hey, if I'm getting a lot of light in the the uh, windshield area here, I will pump out more cold air up here. So it's actually like a smart climate system, which I've actually never even heard of. So that's pretty amazing. The other thing that I've heard about this is that, I don't let's say it's a ceramic heater, but if this car is on heat, there is like a heater element in the dashboard that will heat up. So in 60, 90 seconds, you'll get warm air, even though the engine temperature isn't up to uh, operating temperature, because that's what warms cars, you know, the coolant that is coming off of engines. And so that was something that originally came in like the Mercedes S classes to kind of give you heat right away in cold weather and so if that car does have it and i've never turned on the heat in this car because it's just been smoking hot lately then that's pretty impressive too now i think again everything around here is pretty nicely done now the car does have blind spot warning it does have rear camera with lines and i also think it has cross traffic alert so if you're backing out and there's a car coming it will take care of that for you too but what's really awesome is, what you might be able to see here, is that I've got a little icon of the car and the road lines because I have the lane departure warning on. And then also, when you get into cruise control, you get some lines up there showing you that you've got a wide open road, but when you start getting up on a car, it uses radar and backs off the car all the way to a dead stop. So it's gonna prevent you from drifting out of the lane and it does work, um, electrically assisted power steering here. So what I actually did intentionally is there was no one else on the road. I was kind of trying to let myself drift to the white line and what the car will do is actually nudge it automatically back to ride that line. And if you cross over, it'll give you uh, a little yellow warning there and it'll start beeping. Beep, 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 beep. So pretty awesome. And then also because I was on cruise control rolling up on semis, the car always backed down, kind of slowed up kept a good distance so it really was enjoyable nannies in some ways making my three hour drive in this car actually pleasurable now i do worry a little bit that having some of those aids will make you a sloppier or lazier driver but i man i really really liked having it so that was kind of awesome now the other thing i want to show you down here is this button hopefully you can see it, it says auto headlights that is not the automatic headlights which you turn on up here what they are as i was playing around with it are kind of like these auto dimming high beams. So in some areas, I was driving through some rural areas, I had the high beams on, I turned this on, and what I think it was doing is it was turning off the headlights or the high beams when it detected other light coming on. But it was kind of an interesting idea, especially if you tend to use high beams and you forget, and the other people, like sometimes when I drive by someone that has high beams, I'm like, ah, you blinded me, you forgot you had high beams on. So whatevs, but uh, pretty cool. Now, a couple other things I will say about this, I should probably start with the head unit. First of all, the head unit has Bluetooth, hands-free calling, worked great, I took phone calls. There is this thing with apps, like there's some sort of Toyota app that you can download that'll integrate here, but then you have to actually create an account, which was silly. But the thing actually does have a USB port down here. I plugged in a lightning cable and my iPhone, and this car has Apple CarPlay, which is awesome. It is so nice to be able to play audiobooks, podcast music, uh, have directions built in. I absolutely am appalled 
that more automakers don't just put it in. I mean, honestly, that is kind of a deal breaker for me if I were to buy a new modern car. And the fact that it comes in here and they're not charging separate and you don't have to buy an upgrade is amazing to me. So you get that over here. You get this little tiny ledge. I, you know, it's not really that deep. It's like three inches deep. So I assume you could probably put your phone there. I actually was putting my phone last night into this cup holder. Now, a couple of things I want to show you. I actually saved my cup from last night because there's a cup holder there and there's a cup holder here. So you and your uh, passenger can both use them but they are redonkulously deep man in fact there's this little lip right there you might be able to see it i'm putting my finger on it and sometimes the cup kind of hits that lip and stays there and that seems all right but if i wiggle it and push it down holy smokes this is a, a large mcdonald's cup look how far down that goes man <laughs> you know i guess they do that so that you don't have to hit it when your arm is up here but um you know when i hit this lip that's as far as i thought it was and that was pretty that was pretty far in uh, I didn't realize that they were that deep, which actually kind of makes it a little tough because I threw some change in there and reaching down there to get it isn't a problem, but it's just kind of amazing. Uh, I even like this little shifter. It's kind of like this, uh, you know, it's plastic, but it looks like a brushed stainless steel or something and has a nice little boot on it. And then you got the black piano plastic there. Um, so I'm really liking that. Probably the two things that I don't like about this are the seats in that this model is only cloth but they do a nice job it looks like a nice upholstery on it so that's all right but the other thing that i don't really like are these headrests they don't look bad and they're not super intrusive but as i swing it around here the problem is this is as high up as the headrest goes and if i put it down any further this front edge is leaning forward so much it's right in the back of my head and it pushes me kind of uncomfortably forward so i actually would have loved to have this even higher so that i could kind of put my head back have the posture I want, but these headrests are probably too aggressive in their angle forward. So that I don't really like. A um, little disappointed in that, but it is what it is. If I spin around and try to look, you can see those stylized C pillars there give me almost no um, view. And especially over here, if I'm trying to look around, man, the, my, I have a massive blind spot. So that's why you really need the blind spot warning in this car for sure the other thing i will say is because of that highly stylized sport utility coupe like effect the rear window is pretty small so that's all you see in in most cars i would say the rear mirror here is filled with the view from out back but as you can see we just have kind of like a a small oval so kind of keep that in mind now let's swing out to the outside here because i want to show you more of the back first of all <laughs> the door has this really interesting handle because of kind of the shape of it you can see here it's like this lever up here and you pull it open and you're kind of pulling it like this and there's a pretty large hang out here so it's a little funny you usually when i'm opening this i'm kind of grabbing it here afterwards so kind of keep that in mind now look at this door this big kick up on the side it is a little claustrophobic when you get in for obvious reasons now i also want to show you the rear seat here uh the rear seat where i'm sitting is just fine and you can move up that seat on that side quite a bit but in its furthest back position it is a pretty tight squeeze but if i get in here i actually have pretty good uh, leg room and foot room and again we have this patterned material here and a large cup holder now i'm going to just close this door because i want to show you you can see um I don't have a headroom problem, that's not the problem, but the roof line drips or comes down so far it's probably level with my eyes and this piece here, this uh, shoulder line wraps up here. So when I look out to the side, you know, I see door in my peripheral vision and so it is really cocooned back here. Uh, for really long drives, I don't know that you'd really, really like this uh, in the back seat, but I would say because of the small nature of the platform and the architecture, it's just kind of the nature of it. You could kind of take this whole car, blow it up another 10 or 15% probably, make it a full-size SUV, and I would change nothing about the design, but it would make it feel larger. But right now, this window is pretty small, your view is pretty, you know, restricted, and so when you're driving around, if you like knowing what's going on or are we gonna hit a car or something like that you're not gonna like sitting in the back seat of this car but i will tell you that i like the headrest better back here they seem to be a lot more comfortable for whatever reason so that's pretty awesome now the one really nice thing about these seats and i sh was showing you down here how high the seat is that's because these seats have two levers on the side which is pretty amazing to me they actually have raising and lowering on this level lever and when i first got in the car i was pulling this and thought it was going to be 
recline adjustment. Well, there's a second lever here and that's your recline adjustment. So it's really uh, quite nice that you have seat height adjustability and obviously you always have the recline adjustability. All right, so let's swing all the way to the back here because the only other thing that I've maybe been a little disappointed with is there's a little button, rubberized button here to open this up. And if I hit it and kind of pull it up, oh, it worked fine there. But sometimes for whatever reason, it gets a little finicky if I hit it. And, I don't know, oh, I won't do it on camera. But uh, I was putting my bags and stuff in the back here and sometimes I'd hit it and it wouldn't quite delatch and I have to hit it again and it would come all the way up. So maybe it was a little sticky and you know, hot weather or something. But you do get uh, this, like it, it, this is kind of like a one of those windshield heat deflectors it's a very small tonneau but you do have a pretty large you know car size trunk here which is nice i was able to put all my luggage back here no problem and you, you can't you don't have a parcel shelf to put anything on top of it but it's going to be about a trunk a car trunk height you know the useful area here is going to be about here down so you can't stick anything up just because look at it, the, the aggressive angle on that so is it going to be a home depot running car i don't think so but can you get groceries in here a couple uh, golf bags go on a road trip you bet no problem it's pretty it's pretty perfect for that and the funny thing is here the handle is reversed so you have to pull it like this i mean if you want to um it's just grab it and manhandle it down but so okay right there it's kind of partially latched it, i didn't slam it shut and that's what was happening yesterday on the the opening of it so you gotta give it a little more stink so it is a little funny that maybe it wasn't a an automatic or motorized hatch uh, just given all of the other features on this car but man i really like it and i tell you what uh, the price point on this really kind of shocked me too so this car originally was supposed to be sold in the u.s as a scion and that maybe it doesn't surprise me but it seems like a much higher end car than i was expecting from scion now the scion brand obviously disappeared on us but i really like the looks the style and basically the kicker is the value on this so i went online and priced one out i just was kind of curious before i came out here to check it out you get the two liter inline four cylinder engine here in a cvt which you can definitely tell on the the road which is funny because when you get into the first gear uh, and just kind of slam on the gas, it just kind of winds up like a CVT, but then it does like sh have like a fake shift. It's like, mm, and brings it back down the reps. But I think that's all pretty good. And you get 20 plus miles of a gallon, nice looking car, seems very capable. I was on dirt roads with it, no problems anywhere. And I priced out the limited with the leather and everything except the premium audio system because I was like really impressed with all this tech. And I tell you what, it came out to like 28 grand. This one, which I think is the XLE, I priced out and it was like 26 on the Toyota website. And then I went to my local Chicago dealership webpage and looked at what they had in inventory. And they had a limited listed for like 26.4 and an XLE like this listed for 24,000 even. So I was really impressed with that. I think that is a smoking good deal on a brand new car. And I think it's just, man, I mean, I don't know if I'm in the target demographic for this or not, but I actually have been kind of complaining over the last few years that you can't really get a good car for under 30, you know, like any car, like a tricked out Toyota Camry is now like a $40,000 car. You know, minivans are like 40 plus thousand dollar cars, let alone a decent brand. But I think this is a great car for the mid twenties or the low twenties, depending on the trim you get. And if you're a techie and someone who needs a lot of the modern features in the car, wants something safe, Honda Re or Toyota reliability, Honda reliability. <laughs> but dude, I'm pretty impressed with this. And especially if I could find something like a 2018 model with all the same accoutrements, uh, used one year old, used maybe 10, 12,000 miles on it and get a discount on that, man, I don't know. I'd be hard pressed to say that wouldn't be a car that I wouldn't mind uh, enjoying. Probably the only thing that I w thought might be lacking on it, and it wasn't in the specs, you can't even upgrade to it, is like a four wheel drive system. So they're all front wheel drive, uh, which is just fine. But sometimes in the, the ice and the snow in Chicago, uh, having four wheel drive can be kind of convenient. But I get that it's not there. They're just kind of trying to simplify production on it. But man, good on Toyota on the CHR. I really, really like it. I'll be honest. It may be something I add to my my stable at some point uh, i'll put the toyota information in the description below and links to toyota merchandise if you want to help support the channel uh buy through the link peter Rompanda panda out